last time we saw Cole, he made an incredibly cryptic phone call, yep. and then disappeared in, uh, I don't remember, what kind of car was it? Uh, it was like a Pontiac GTO, it was yellow. Yeah. Kind of an older classic muscle car. Reveals the fact that there's still a lot most people don't know about Cole. Yup. And I'm excited to get into that. So, who is it that came to pick you up? Who came to pick me up? His name is Austin. He is kind of an old friend of Cole, one of one of the fosters of the moms, younger than Cole by quite a bit, but has aged out of the standard mom care, but knows of Cole, obviously, from home life. Cole keeps him kind of close. As sort of a right-hand man, but really is just because he's, I don't know, just a silly, silly youngin. Also kind of your younger brother, question mark. Yeah. Yeah, via mom's younger bro. Yeah, via mom's, you have quite a few siblings. Sure do. Both officially and unofficially. Yeah, so Austin comes to pick you up, but what all information would he have gotten from that weird cryptic phone call? Alright, well, Austin probably wouldn't have gotten much. Austin was actually mobilized from another one of Cole's, uh, I guess you can call them friends, companions, partners, uh, Isaac. Associates. The associate Isaac, Isaac White, who kind of just was on standby whenever Cole sent a text as he was being taken to the underground facility for Tempest Multi. And basically what happened was as he left that facility, Cole did a little bit of phone switcheroo, popping SIM cards into a phone that had GPS capabilities and tagged that location for his network of individuals and basically switched comm. So his old phone at that time was deleted or by deleted essentially destroyed in a a little pouch of thermite hidden inside of a pack of cigarettes so contacts and text records that wasn't saved strictly on the sim card would be removed so yeah he's got same number but he now has a a nicer more newer phone that he's he's currently got and obviously he's got a couple burners laying around that he's going to use if necessary but He definitely made plays tagging that location and making everyone be aware and basically called for Isaac to mobilize some of their higher ups, something he called, I believe I refer to it as the listeners. So basically to mobilize them and to spare, spare the watchers or spare the others less necessary for what's to come. Yeah. And so, there are movements going on in the shadows and places no one would think to look. Sure enough. I'm trying to think, like, how is Austin reacting to all of this? Oh, he's just, he's in, in for a penny, in for a pound. Like, he's, he let's ride or die. Austin is, uh, he looks up to Cole in a way, big bro status. Doesn't necessarily aspire to be exactly like Cole, but definitely thinks, you know, I think Austin wants to be respected by Cole, so he's he's kind of a ride or die in that sense. Love that. So Austin glances over at you after you've been driving in silence for a few minutes, heading towards wherever you're heading towards. He's like, "So, what's up? What's going on?" Austin, remember I told you there's some people in town that I don't necessarily trust. It's not necessarily that I don't trust them, I'm finding out. It's that they don't seem to trust anyone else. There's hidden bunkers, hidden bases. There's tunnels. Man, this is bigger. At least they're bigger than I realized. I mean, another couple groups in this town you don't trust. Is this a new group, old group? A little bit of both, honestly, I think. They've been keeping eyes on things and, well, I guess old Hess... Sure enough, knows one better than you realize. I guess one of them's his, old Hess's mom. Really? Yeah, didn't expect that one. That was something. Do you know anything about the tunnels in this town? That's a good question. Let's see if he does. So, 
High or low? Low. You know, I think I read something about that. Back when they were creating this town for... Back when it was the Atomic City or the Secret City or whatever the hell you want to call it. They built tunnels as sort of safety measures if there was ever an attack on the lab. So scientists and civilians could get to safety. I think some of them might connect to different bunkers and so on and so forth. Man, you paid way too much attention in history class. Honestly, the only tunnel I've been around here was a rave back when I was about your age, but we don't tell the moms about that one, okay? Oh, of course not. All right. So you know where to go, right? We're headed back off to Old Man's Holler down there. Kind of where I've typically been been camping. I think the others are going to meet us down that way. Oh, yeah, sure. That's where I was heading. As he um, turns, because he definitely wasn't heading that way. Cole says nothing. The only reason he brought it up is because he realized they were going down the wrong road. Yeah. He just kind of plays it cool. Now it's going to take like an extra five minutes because Oak Ridge was intentionally designed to be difficult to get around. So you make one wrong turn, you have to like <laughs> take several other turns to get back to where you're going. It's great. It's where it some areas, it's like they threw a bunch of pasta on a piece of paper. And I'm like, here's our roads. So, uh, that's pretty cool back there, you rolling up like that. I bet I freaked the ever-living out of the others. That was kind of fun. Yeah, that was fun. Hey, was that the podcast, like, was that that vlogger lady who talks about all the supernatural stuff on her show? Sure enough, and believe it or not, she might not be all that crazy. I mean, no shit, you've seen what's around this town, right? <sighs> Look, seeing and believing, as much as people want to say you got to see to believe, I still don't necessarily think that uh, the powers that be are all they're cracked up to be, if you catch my drift. I mean, I definitely agree with that. But also, we were raised by immortals. Well, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. There's all kinds of weird stuff out there. Speaking of weird stuff, are y'all, like, investigating something? Or is she investigating something? What's going on? Well, I don't want to go scaring you or nothing, but there's apparently some... They're, they're calling him the stranger in town, and... Oh, that weirdo? Everything's just kind of going wonky, a little bit sideways, and, you know, doom, destruction, everything they like to preach on, on Sunday mornings. It is, uh, potentially not good, but maybe it's an opportunity. I don't know. Still figuring that one out. So, that one weird guy is supposed to bring about the end of the world, he's like that. Anti? Anti whatever or something? Anti Jesus? I think so. I mean, that's how everyone seems to treat him. I mean, everybody dies. And well, I guess maybe mom, not the moms, but everyone bleeds at least. Well, shit. Here, I thought this town was boring. Yeah. Should have got out while you could. And Cole just kind of laughs and looks out the window. What, and leave you? You'd be helpless without me. I don't think you're wrong. Look, things might get kind of crazy, Austin. You just promised me one thing. If the fire does light and you find yourself having a hard time keeping up with the rest of us, you get yourself as far away from here as you can. Dude, I ain't leaving you. I've told you how many times now. I'm sticking it out. I ain't leaving. You just remember what I said. If that time comes... Just make sure you're okay. Yeah, whatever. Quit talking like you think the world's gonna end. Ah, you know me. Ain't nothing killing me today. Uh, no, but it sure as hell might try. And you continue on to the meeting place. And who all's there to meet you? Also, where is this meeting place? This meeting place is kind of just out in the woods. It doesn't really have an official name in the town. It's just something that some of the kids Cole's age roughly school age they kind of made up a dumb nickname for it old man's bluff or it's got different names 
old man's holler or you know old man's bluff everyone calls it something different but they all know what they're talking about it's it's just a little kind of secluded place over a bluff in the area that they used to shoot cans have gone camping just done any number of dumb things as as teenagers would it's just a it's a common common place that everyone knows and cole is kind of very very familiar with the area so it's just kind of a place one of the the places that he can in kind of reference and bring everyone to and meeting him the listeners that he's specifically looking for isaac obviously the one that he called and then he's looking for kevin clark june hart roger king and greg bailey each of them are just old school maybe a little bit younger maybe a little bit older but all have been kind of ride or dies with Cole for a long long time all right probably gotta be mostly voicing Isaac but we'll see if the others pipe up that sounds perfectly fine with me minor spoiler alert they might all sound very similar <laughs> I mean, it's not a situation where all of them are going to pipe up. There's a reason they kind of get called the listeners, in a sense. So it wouldn't be too too out of the ordinary for them to mostly just listen. When you get there, they are all there. Looks like Greg and June just got there. You might have beaten them there had Austin not taken a wrong turn and had to kind of turn around a little bit. And... Isaac is standing there, and he, as you come up, he's like, all right, so, what's going on, boss? Well, you obviously, you got my, my ping, right, my GPS location back, back there. I sent that, hopefully I did it right, I, technology's sometimes just above me, you know that. Yeah, we, we got it, that place over on Malvern. Yeah, so, there's, unbeknownst to me at the time, there is a bit of a, I guess I want to call it a secret base. It's not really a base, but there's an old pool that has been kind of hollowed out and turned into something of an information briefing room. Man, the, they got the lot. They got whiteboard, chalkboards. It's It looks like you just take a piece of red yarn and walk all over that room. They got theories for days. Wasn't expecting that. Old Hess apparently is a little bit of ties there. Her mom seems to maybe be running the joint. I don't really know how their their power structure works, but she was definitely there. And there could be more of these facilities because I've seen one of them come out this tunnel and that was a bit of a surprise to me. They seem to know more than, well, they're telling a lot of, a lot of folk and that is a little scary at times, being out of the loop, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. What is it that they know? Remember when we talked last time about uh, this this stranger fella people keep talking about? I I mentioned it to the moms. They didn't seem to have too much information, but they definitely have heard rumblings. They also banned him from their territory, which is the only time you know that they've done that. They seem to be following him and kind of treating him like he's the anti-Jesus. He's going to take down the whole, you know, reality, the world, some real Doctor Strange Marvel stuff. I don't know. It's more magic mumbo-jumbo, but still. He seems to be something of power, and they seem to be afraid of him the way that they keep an eye on him. I know if I keep that close an eye on somebody, I'm right terrified of him. Well, shit. Well, the things you could have brought us here for, that was not the one I expected. Well, I like to keep it fresh. Mm-hmm. Any of y'all heard anything about this this stranger? I know it's kind of a silly name they seem to make up for him. Uh, Doo-doo Head, y'all guys know anything about that guy? You say a couple of them pipe up and talk about how he showed up out of town a couple of months ago, but seems to know people better than he should, and they feel like he's not what they think he is. People describe what he looks like differently. If you, like, you ask two people, and it might be kind of similar, but you ask a third, and those descriptions don't match up. Seems to know too much whenever someone tries to ask him a question, either 
deflects it or asks them some, about something that he should not know about. And they feel like he's been making moves and you get the feeling that your people may have been watching him closer than you realized. Well, it's good to be let in onto this now. Isaac, you're kind of the eyes and ears of everything. Everything basically goes through you. What, uh, what's your impression of this fella? Do you think we got... Well, do you think we got any kind of moves we can make here? Figuring... We've obviously got some kind of information, and maybe we have something the others don't. What do you think? Do you think think there's any <laughs> any room for for us to keep an eye on him a little closer? Well, seems to me like someone gearing up for a takeover. I think he's got some connections to some of the wolves that live outside of town. They pop in every so often, one or two of them to stir up a little trouble, but our local pack keeps them away. I've, but you've been seeing more and more of them popping around, sniffing around, especially today. It feels like something's going on, especially with what happened with the Oracle. That really was a tragedy. She was a nice kid. She deserved better than whatever happened to her. I gave her a lot of shit, but she really was pretty nice. Yeah. Apparently there's a big memorial service that's gonna be happening tomorrow, but... Been getting some updates. Looks like there's some... Moves going around. Something's got him mighty nervous in the past day or so. I don't know, you think someone might be sniffing around? Trying to get under his skin or something? It's been a while. I think we might need to make a sweep. Might need to try to not necessarily flush him out, but at least try to get some kind of bead on what he's doing and where he's at. I just don't want to put anyone honestly in danger. Things I keep hearing, I don't know. I ain't saying I'm afraid of him, but I don't want nothing happening to none of y'all. Yeah, you heard him kill somebody without actually being in the room from what you could tell, so. Yeah. No. I get that. Which is probably going to be a sound that haunts your dreams for a while. You're welcome. Thanks. Very sweet of you. You're the one that did the thing. Yeah. And then listened to it twice. Pess is still upset with you about that, by the way. So what you're looking to do is you want to get a beat on his location and what is going on right now. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I have the listeners here, the, the, the small group that are kind of the inner circle, if you want to call it that. I'm kind of asking them to, like a spider web in a sense, ask their associates, the people that they hang out with more. Because though we are this little small inner circle, I may not necessarily hang out with their same cluster of individuals. It's kind of a weird pyramid scheme in that sense, but not really at the same time. Your actual group is smaller than most people realize just because a lot of your people yes. know people. There, there's a lot of, like, favors owed to favors owed to favors owed. Like, you know this person and this person, so you need to do me this favor kind of arrangement. Yeah. My little inner circle are friends that I've had for ages, and though... They might have people that they're more close to. They would still kind of be loyal in a sense that they know I'm good friends with who they respect so well. Yeah. So I believe this will be putting out the word, which I do believe this normally happens like between sessions, but whatever. We're just doing it this way. When you put out the word, you need something to your circle, blah, blah, blah. You're looking for information, mostly. Roll with status. Yeah, rolling with the status of your circle. Ooh. Well, uh, I rolled a 10 natural, and then plus status is pretty good. Okay, then. On a 10 plus, it shows up more or less. So is there a specific piece of information you're looking for? More than anything, I'm trying to 
trying to figure out by by asking the this little inner circle of listeners or whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm asking them to ask their friends and associates what they know, what they've seen, if anything is weird. Basically, putting our ears to the ground and listening for vibrations. Just trying to figure out either location or like, does anyone know potentially or have any theories of like, hey what's weird that you've seen here and trying to piece together what his most recent move is or basically figure out a motivation based on like a pattern if we can figure out the pattern of where he's been and what he's been doing maybe we can figure out the next step in the pattern okay so since he showed up he has been slowly expanding his network of people who either owe him or people he is blackmailing your group has been trying to keep an eye on who those people are so possibly find ways to get them out of that situation especially for the people who are being blackmailed because he seems to know things that he shouldn't know I think it's probably possible to that when they're doing that, they may not necessarily have pieced together that that's exactly what they're doing. Like, if there's a situation they're trying to get someone out of, they may not have realized that it was him behind it in the first place. So piecing that together with, like, the patterns and stuff is kind of what we're trying to do now. Yeah, we're just kind of, like, hand-waving through the information that you get. Someone was nearby when he got a call on Friday. The other person on the other end of the phone said that someone had been in with concerns and seemed to be looking into something and heard him telling them he would deal with it. Which, given the timing as you're putting together the timeline, you can piece together that might have been someone telling him that Cass was asking questions and so forth. With that piece of information, would I assume that she was making arrangements with the wizards? Yeah, she had, she had talked to the old the men. Old men. Or, well, that's not what the actual name is. That's just what everyone actually calls them. Many of them were military officials. A couple of them were actual scientists who were working in the lab when the Grimoire was discovered. And so they were the first to be able to begin studying it, have used magic to prolong their lives, to basically pause their aging, and they kind of run the magical side of this town at least. They are very powerful and influential, and most of them suck. There are two who are actually good people, but they're not in a position where they could do much, and one of them that's kind of a decent person, but meh. So... You piece together that at least one that one of them, probably one of the assholes, called the stranger after the meeting to let him know what Cass said. One of the old men called the stranger? You don't have 100% confirmation, but you are definitely able to piece those details together. You don't know who, but... You know which ones are more likely to have done something like that. That makes a whole lot of sense. So, a lot of people have been really upset about him being there. You know, the stranger specifically. He seems to have been getting some updates and getting more agitated as the day went on today. As in, like, he was informed that there were more people asking around about things. There's also the story of he seems to have been hitting on a very pretty lady who looks like the one that runs looks like the lady that runs the theater, that friend of yours, Cole. And might have given her his number. Hmm. Y'all are sitting together talking about possible implications and so forth of what's going on. You get the feeling that he's very well aware of which people in the party have been asking around about them. Also, one of your listeners has a friend who seems to be oddly close to him, but they won't say who. Kind of like a protecting their sources kind of thing. 
because that person's in a potentially vulnerable situation. So the fewer people know, the better. You know that if it became necessary, they would tell you if you press it. But their friends in the dicey situations, like standing a few feet away from the devil, metaphorically and maybe even literally. Getting to be later in the evening, I'll say you have, like, you've got a comfortable situation where you're meeting, so you have lights and so forth. We definitely have a campfire going right now, and there's obviously, like, headlights from one of the vehicles kind of on and giving us light in the area. Yeah, I'll say there's a cabin that looks kind of decrepit on the outside, or like a little shed, but it's actually, like, pretty nice on the inside, so you've, like, cleaned it up for whenever people need to, like, just disappear for a while and can't quite get to the bombs yet. Oh yeah, and it for sure, that cabin for sure has, like, old trinkets from the 90s and pictures of, like, people that have stayed there, like, little Polaroids, but not very many, because they're, most people are kind of, like, sketched, it's, it's just sketched in the sense that they don't want to leave their picture up. They just, uh, it looks, it looks like an old clubhouse from a bunch of kids. Yeah, definitely does, because at one point that's all it was, but it's kind of become something more. And if a person who has a friend that is close to the stranger, I'm gonna say it's Roger who brings it up. He says, uh, Looks like something might be happening soon, if not right now. The guy just put a call out. I think he's been watching people too, and he's told someone that they need to deal with them now. Roger, you're saying you're saying the stranger is telling somebody that needs something needs to be dealt with now. Yeah, it could be. So we've had this theory that. He's aware of the people who have been trying to... So you know how there's the people who have been trying to kind of like raise in power to kind of take over and shove the wizards out because they're people who actually care about the community? Yeah, yeah. And these are also possibly people that you have helped in one way or another. Oh yeah, for sure. He's targeting those people. Well... He is mobilizing some group to go and do something to them. Now, I ain't gonna try to implicate your friend or nothing. I don't... <laughs> I don't want to start naming names, but do you think that they can either... Do you think it's safe for him to tell them? Or them to tell them? Or do you think we need to get them out of there as soon as we can? My friend's gonna be trying to sneak away as soon as he can to... He's been trying to find a way to get out of there. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. If you can do that, that might be... Well, I don't want to lose anyone else. If you can get them out of there and, and get as much information on whatever motions are happening, definitely, definitely get that get that to me. I'm, I'm mighty curious on what kind of move he's making, especially if he's targeting those folk. Yeah, can do. And this is when June pipes up. Basically, she has a contact who you do know who... Well... You know their name, you don't know exactly who they are personally. It was her contact that let her know about the exterior wolf packs movements. And the fact that the strangers prop might have a connection to them. He might be talking to the other pack. If he offered them something? Depending on what he offered them, they might be willing to do some... Real, make a really bold move in the city. Oh. I think they're just jumping for an opportunity anyway. You don't gotta offer them much. Yeah, that's... That's my concern. Alright. Well, so we're under the impression we're dealing with the second wolf pack. The beta wolves, not the alpha wolves. <laughs> and, uh... We're under the impression they're gonna be going after some folk that don't need it, so... We might need to... God, I hate to say it. We might need to get involved. I might need to get involved. I don't think... Hmm. Okay, Cole just kind of, like, sits there for a second silent. He really... He thinks back to Cass and the experience of someone basically just being there and then not. And how futile and how coming to grips with that mortality 
is a lot. He's not so much a stranger to death, but he's kind of a stranger to... I guess he's not really a stranger. He just, he hates, absolutely hates to see someone that he cares about in any sense get hurt. So his, his desire to involve too many more people into this than it already involved, especially from those that he's been so close to for so long, he's very apprehensive to the idea of, of fully mobilizing, especially asking them to, to call on their reserves or their friends and to bring too many people into this to a fight that is not something he wants to do. But what happens if you don't? What happens if this guy is able to take total control of the city? And what happens if Cass's, Cass's visions are right? If this man brings the destruction of everything. Cole thinks about that for a second. He stokes the fire and then says, Well, I think it's time we made a move. Everyone sitting around you, they just straighten up immediately and Isaac makes direct eye contact and he's like, what are your orders? We follow you. Well, when you say it like that, find him. I need you to figure out where he is, figure out where these other wolves are. And for those that can, let's try to get the good people out of the way. I might need to meet with a, a friend in a certain theater and maybe get a line. I think there's a stranger I need to talk to. So, let's start with helping the good people and then we'll get to the finding the stranger in the wolves. So, you are essentially offering passage yeah. for these people. I'm guessing to the moms. Yeah. To, to the one safe place. Okay. When a faction offers passage to someone, roll with their. Ooh. We didn't talk about your faction size. So, a si size one is like about 15 plus. I'm like, how do I want to determine how big of a group you're mobilizing right now? I think. Man, based on the like rules or whatever I was reading. My understanding might not be the absolute greatest, but mortals typically have a pretty large faction size. Here's one way to do it for, like, how many people are going to be answering this right now. Roll to put out the word again. Sure. Do I need to plus it to anything? Yeah, that it's just roll with your status. Ba -ba 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 -da -ba. Ten. All right. So since that is a success... I don't know, what size do you think you are? You think you're size 2 or 3? So 30, 60? I think that immediate size from people that we would, would trust my die hard, like rider dies, and then their rider dies, we're probably in the 30s, low 30s, or early, like late, early, late 20s, early 30s. We're probably like high, high 20s, early, low 30s. Okay. I'll say your size two then, because they might also be just reaching out to people who they know won't ask a lot of questions. <laughs> we'll do we'll do the thing without asking a lot. So I think if like we were to go fully, fully, it would definitely be more than that. But my trust for some of the more distant people would be pretty small. It's basically just like, hey, do the small thing for me. Yeah, no, it would be yeah, that would be more subtle. So in that case. Your size is two, so when faction roll offers passage to someone in the city and to or out of the city, or in this case, to the mob's place, roll with their size. So roll plus two? Yes. Oh! That's eleven. I rolled a five and a four. Okay. All right. On a hit, the way is made clear. No matter who oppose it, choose one. Someone exits. They are beyond reach until they choose to return. Or someone enters the faction gains a powerful axe set. I believe this would be someone exiting. Yeah. 
it will take a while, but throughout the night you get confirmation that all of these people, and also probably some of their friends as well, get caught up in this. Potentially the party will see. Ooh, good times. I for sure inform the moms, like, SOS, I, I got some people coming your way, they just need, they just need a glass of lemonade and a safe place to stay. Uh, this has to do with the stranger and they don't really, I think, ask a whole lot of questions that, outside that. They just go into, like, hospitality mode. You get the feeling they may have a better understanding of what's going on here than you do just, like, with the situation. Also, because they've been around for a while, so I think actually the response back is we already have their beds ready. And Cole just smiles. Like, he would die for them. He doesn't care. And he will one day, he's sure. But they're just the best people. And there's also just another response. Stay safe. And Cole responds always in just one word. But it, and it does take some time. There are... Some people have to take some more roundabout ways. There are some pick up and drop off. They're very careful about how they do this, but... All of the people that the stranger were targeting, they're able to get them out without any trouble, and they all, by morning, are safely at your mom's house. Sick. Eggs and bacon, let's go. <laughs> you got the good dice rolls, like, for real. I very rarely roll these, and that's about to change. Yeah, because the next is tracking someone down. What is this plus? When a faction tries to track down a status one or status two character, um, well, it's, so it's for specific characters, but I'll leave a little bit of wiggle room since you're also trying to, like, track down the wolves. Would you say your faction has a relevant asset to track down the wolves? Well... Could you make the argument that someone's already kind of keeping an eye on at least some of them? I would say yes, but I think that our relevant asset is maybe one of the friends of my ride or dies is a wolf themselves, and might be able to sniff out, or at least they have contacts and might be able to get some location just based on like yeah, we don't like them. They're very likely in this location. Just some information. Because, I mean, if you're a wolf pack and people start accusing wolf packs of doing something, you're going to be aware of what the other wolf pack is doing. Yeah, I'm just looking at all the other things. So you will be adding one to the roll. They are not in the same circle. You have a pretty big faction, so that's, there's no penalty there. And you're... Query is not actively hiding, so you know, you will be at rolling two d six and adding one. Come on, good dice. Oh, that's not good. A total of five. A couple of people who were looking for them go radio silent. I don't like that one bit. In fact, Cole says that straight up as he's messaging and and doesn't get a reply. He doesn't like that. I don't like this. Also thing like some of your listeners are gonna be like, well, so and so was following them, but they stopped responding. I don't like that. This is what I didn't want. But I don't like that. Okay. June says, send me their phone numbers and I can get someone tracking their cells, we can get someone to the location to see what's going on there. Ah. June may be a bit of a hacker. Or know people who are tech savvy. So, some people at least got hurt. You don't know exactly what happened. She's going to be helping get people back to the location. So, let's roll again to see if you can find this stranger. But I'm going to say he is actively hiding right now, so it's just going to be a straight 2d6 roll. Question. Do you still send people to find the stranger after what happened with people trying to find the wolves? I imagine they were already going, so yeah, I guess. 
No, true. True. My roll was real good, though. What'd you get? An 11. Five and a six. Oh, hell yeah. He was hiding for a bit. People couldn't find him. But then someone spotted him because something happened at the lab. It had something about an attack, so they went to go check it out to see what happened. And there was, like, something that the dumpster on fire. There was all kinds of ambulances there. You don't know what happened, but shit went down. And, but the person who reported that also said they saw the stranger going into the lab. Came out sometime later looking absolutely furious about something. Got in his car and left and they were able to follow him. And he went back to the house that Angel saw him going to. Actually, no. Correction. They followed him to John Stratton's house, the leader of the old men. And he went inside there. Oh. Oh. They'll be able to keep surveilling him because it just so happens. They have a friend that they visit regularly for game nights that lives across, that lives like diagonally across the street. So they've gone over and told their friend and it's an unexpected game night and they're gonna be able to keep an eye. Yahtzee. They'll let you know when he leaves. Cause he rolled really well. And I'll say at this point, like, it's getting late. Is there anything else Cole wants to do? Uh, I think he's gonna just... It's not necessarily dismissing, he's gonna be like, well, I don't know about y'all, I think it's about time that we took a breath, count our folks, make sure we got everybody at least in line. I know we got a couple that have gone AWOL, maybe we can find them. Ugh. I think for now, we need to stop, listen, see what the stranger's doing, and if y'all get to a safe place, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna have to go have a couple talks with a few people. June, let me know if you hear back from those folks, and Roger, you get your friend out of there as best you can. Um, okay. Isaac will pipe up. Do you want someone to stay with you? I don't feel like anyone should be alone right now. Baby buddy system. And I'll say, at this point, Austin is kind of... He nodded off a little bit. In the chair next to you. I was like, I think I'll be fine with my... My little bro here, um... At least for now. What? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, gotta give me a ride, man. You, you brought me out here. What are you talking about? Just falling asleep on me. I just kinda... I smack him on the back of the head, gently. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not my fault you're boring. Knock it off. Go start up a uh, go start up that old haggard car of yours. Can you trash talk my car? I better I can I should make you walk. I'll take you and my dolphin on a on a sixty straight any day, come on. You know I beat you in that thing. Just kinda laughing, cause there's no way the little four cylinder dolphin is gonna do anything to that GTO. He's like, mm-hmm, yep, yep, you keep, you keep talking about that, you keep talking. You yet to show me. Uh, he says as he's, like, getting up to start his car. By the way, where am I taking you this time? You feel like catching a play? This is a theater we might need to go to. Tempest Multi is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is an actual play podcast using Urban Shadows 2E Quick Start Guide, and it's set once again in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I am your keeper and producer. I am Blaze, and I'll be playing Jason Madison Coleman, the Aware. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.